main interface of the TriCaster is your control room for your live production system. It allows you to control every attribute of the TriCaster. Let's go ahead and take a look at how it's laid out. The interface is broken into three sections. The monitoring section here along the top, the live switching section here in the center, and along the bottom you have a modular tab-based interface allowing you to access the internal power of the TriCaster. The monitoring section here along the top can be modified a few different ways. First of all, this monitor area is completely scalable and you'll notice that if you put the cursor over the dividing line between the preview monitor and all of the individual input monitors, it turns into a left and right arrow and if you left click and drag, you do have the ability to scale the interface this way. So you can set it up the way that you're comfortable with it. Now, if you want to get back to default, simply double click on that line and it will reset to its default position. You can also scale the interface top to bottom by grabbing the line in between the bottom of the monitoring section and the live switching section. And again, you can scale this up to remove the monitors or you can bring it down, make the monitors much larger. Again, double clicking on that line will reset it to its factory default. The monitor area shows us the four incoming live signals. We have our two network inputs that allow us to bring in the displays of external computers or bring in Apple AirPlay devices. There are two digital disc recorders or DDRs and we have a monitor for our graphics player to show us what's currently loaded in that player as well as a large preview monitor and a program out monitor showing us what's actually going out live. Now you do have the ability to change this portion of the interface using the tabs along the top and you can set it up to look at just the four external sources coming in, the six internal sources available, the DDRs, the network inputs, the graphics player, and the frame buffer. You also have a waveform monitor and vector scope available and again remember that you can scale the interface and over here you have the ability to choose what you want the scope to be looking at, either preview, program or what's happening on the effects row. So you could use the scope on the effects row and make modifications to signals that are not going out live even during a live production. Now again to get back to our factory default remember just double click on the line. You also have the ability to attach a second monitor for the interface and this second monitor can actually be configured a number of ways. Now remember the second multi-view monitor is going to be attached to the HDMI output above the DVI output on the video card on the back of the TriCaster 450. The multi-viewer can be set up in a number of configurations and the first configuration we're looking at is the all configuration. This shows us all of the external video feeds coming in, the internal video sources available in the switcher, a large preview and program output, and the production clocks in the lower right hand corner. We can also configure this in a number of ways. We're going to click on the small gear in the upper right hand corner of our program out window, and then click on the multi view tab. I have a pop up right here that allows you to select what you want to configure the multi viewer for. And again, we can set it up to view just the external cameras coming in. Again, you get larger preview monitors when you do that. It can also be set up to show just the internal sources available in the TriCaster. It can also be a program output. So now you have another program out uh, in another format that could be used to feed a projector or something along those lines. You can also make it a hardware preview monitor. If you wanted to have a preview monitor outside of the TriCaster, this is one way of accomplishing that. You can send the effects row out that secondary monitor. Here on the control surface, you have the ability to turn the utility row into the effects row. This means you can now do a cuts only switch on the effects row, and this is separate from the switch that's happening on program out. This means you can have two separate video feeds out of one TriCaster. This is perfect for feeding side screens during a live production or if you need multiple outputs, say one to go to broadcast and one to feed the displays inside of an arena. You also have the ability to do preview and program side by side with production clocks on the multi viewer as well as a large waveform monitor and vector scope. One of the most important things during a live production is time. You always need to keep an eye on the time and it's great to know when your production is going to start and once the production starts when it's going to end. Well the TriCaster comes with a variety of production clocks that do exactly that. 
You'll see the clocks displayed here up in the upper right hand corner of the main interface. And these clocks are also visible on the multi-viewer, the secondary monitor that can be hooked up for the interface as well. Now you can configure the clocks by clicking on the gear right next to the main clock. And you have a few options here. The first option is to subtract 12 hours from the current time. So if it's in 24 hour mode or military time, you can turn it back into regular time or military time by subtracting 12 hours from the clock. You also have the ability to have a secondary production clock and you can turn this clock on and off. You'll see that it disappeared from the interface when I turn these off. But turning this on gives us a countdown clock. Now you have the ability to input a start time of your production and an end time for your production. When this clock is engaged, if it's before the production starts, that clock is a countdown to the start of the production. And if it's after the time that the production is set to start, that clock becomes a countdown to the end of your production.